Hi and welcome into the lesson 7 best chess opening traps. These traps are really easy to learn and therefore you'll be able to apply them in your chess games right away. Let's begin with the first one. It's a trap for black side, so you, you start playing Sicilian defense and then here after those first very common moves you play knight to f6. And here it seems really tempting for white to push his pawn forward at the same time chasing your knight away. Actually even strong opponents fall into this trap. I won a couple games myself just in this way. And if white makes that move, the move which you provoked, the move e5, then you have the double attack, queen a5 check with the double attack of opponent's king and the pawn. And therefore after white plays any move to cover his king, for instance, knight c3, you just grab the pawn and you're a pawn up. It's important to notice here that even if your opponent does not fall into the trap and plays a normal move, for instance, knight to c3, then your position is not corrupted, the game goes on, you can play d6, for instance, or develop your knight or make any normal move, and therefore the trap that you tried to set didn't harm your position in any way. That's also one of the important criteria for the traps that I've chosen for you for this video lesson. All right, let's go ahead to the next trap. Here's trap number two. This time you're playing white and actually you can execute almost the same trap as we have just observed. You start the game with e4 and after your opponent plays c5, there follows knight of 3 d6. Black is trying to play the knight variation, the most popular variation of the Sicilian defense played by Fischer, Kasparov and many other great players. Here we continue with pawn to c3, preparing potentially the d4 advancement, which will build a strong center for you. If black tries to counterattack by playing knight of 6, then it looks like he's attacking your pawn on e4 and you have to protect it. However, you can kind of overlook opponent's threat and make a blunder, so to speak. You play bishop e2, ignoring opponent's threat. And if your opponent happily grabs the pawn, then it enables you to execute a very similar thin double attack queen to a4, which is check to opponent's king and also attack of opponent's knight. Once again, I, I specifically I selected those traps that are follow the same tactical motif and therefore for you it will be easier to remember them. So just the last trap we observed you were using the same trick for black side and here you use the same trick for white side. Therefore after black plays any move to cover his skin you just grab the knight and you won the game. Similar to the previous trap even if your opponent does not capture the poisoned pawn, still nothing bad is happening with you. If your opponent is aware of the trap and he does anything else, like playing knight d7, and now he's threatening to capture your pawn, you can simply protect it by playing pawn to d3, and your position is safe, everything's fine, you're gonna castle and continue the development of your pieces, and everything is just fine. We're moving on to the trap number three, which you can execute against Karakan defense. And this is probably the most powerful trap of all in, in a chess game at all, because here, after black goes knight to d7, which is one of the common moves, another common way is bishop to f5. Those are two most typical moves for black to play here. If black chooses the line knight to d7, preparing an advancement of his other knight to f6, then you can prepare a smothered mate by playing queen to e2. And at first it seems that you're just somewhat developing your pieces, maybe preparing long castling, but if your opponent plays what he intended to play with knight to f6, then you've prepared something really powerful, which is knight d6, smothered mate, and it's mate in six moves, which is a, an extremely rare thing in the game of chess. Very beautiful position. If we take a step back and let's say your opponent is aware of the trap and he does something else, so he does not let you execute your threat. Again, you didn't damage your position in any way, you'll just continue your development. You can go on with knight to f3, develop your bishop somewhere and probably castle long side. So the move queen to e2 in a way is even useful for you. 
For instance, if your opponent goes pawn to e6, then you can continue with bishop to f4, which prepares two interesting things. One thing is that you're ready to go knight d6, which is kind of unpleasant for black, because then after a trade-off of the opponent's bishop, it will be difficult for him to castle. Also, you're preparing castling long side, and all in all, your position is very good. You can execute a very similar tactical motif in a totally different opening. Let's have a look. It starts with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, and here there is a move knight d4. It's quite a well-known trap, and yet some players still are unaware and they fall into it. At first it looks like just a blunder, because the pawn on e5 is left unprotected, and it's tempting for white to grab the pawn, but if you do that, that really almost loses the game on the spot. You have the very powerful reply queen to g5 with a double attack of opponents knight on e5 and the pawn on g2. And then there are a few main moves that, that white can try here. The most natural one is knight takes f7, capturing the pawn and attacking your half a pieces. But then you go with queen takes g2, attacking the rook on h1, and if white removes the rook from the dangerous square, plays rook to f1, then you can capture the pawn on e4, it is check, white has to play bishop to e2, and then you continue with knight to f3. As you can see, it's a very similar tactical motif, the same smothered mate that we have just observed in the previous example. Let's see what else can happen here after your move knight to d4. White captures the pawn, you go on with queen to g5, and here, let's say white still goes knight takes f7, you play queen takes g2. Let's see what happens if white, instead of moving the rook to f1 that we have just observed, what happens if white would take your rook on h8? What happens in this line? Here still everything's super good for you. You take white's rook on h1, which is check, the only move for white is bishop to f1, then you make another check, queen takes e4, once again white has to cover the king, then you take a pawn on c2, it is check, the king has to go to f1, and then queen h1, checkmate. You see that no matter what white tries, he is just swept away entirely and you're winning the game very quickly and you totally destroy white. If you wish to know more details about the trap that we have just analyzed, you can find the link in the description below the video. We have the blog post about it, where it cover, it's covered in greater details. And let's move on to another trap, where once again the similar tactical motif can be executed. And this time it's also a somewhat even more typical thing for black to play, because here, after bishop to c4, instead of going that, we will be dubious move knight to d4, you can just continue with knight of 6, the very classical line, and after white continues with knight g5, attacking your f7 square, you continue with d5, and after pawn takes d5, instead of other moves like knight a5, you have a tricky move knight to d4. And at first sight, it's really tempting for white to go on and execute his threat to f7 square, which he was trying to impose by his previous moves, and white can just push the pawn to d6. However, it's actually a mistake for white, because after queen takes d6, and white grabs happily the pawn on f7, hopefully hoping that he's winning the game, but it kind of lets you execute the same trick that we have already observed. You play queen to c6, with an attack of opponent's bishop on c4, and pawn on g2. And by the way, the bishop from c4 cannot just go away, because also the knight on f7 must be protected. So if white captures the rook on h8, then you play queen takes g2, and this is something very well known for you by now. You're attacking the rook, and once white plays rook to f1, you continue with queen e4 check, and after bishop e2, it's a smothered mate knight f3. Let's analyze one more line which may happen in this variation. White goes knight g5, you continue with d5, and then this tricky move knight to d4. 
and white tries to execute his threat by playing d6, you capture the pawn, and here we have just analyzed the consequences of the move knight takes f7. Let's have a look at another attempt in move bishop takes f7. It looks very good at first sight, because it captures the pawn and it attacks your king. However, after you play king to e7, white suddenly realizes that he doesn't have much pieces developed. He has only two pieces developed so far and therefore he can't really execute any serious attack. Moreover, these pieces are currently in danger. You're gonna play h6 on the next move and then the white knight cannot go away because the bishop will be lost. So white is actually in a big trouble here. If he tries to retreat to save his minor pieces and plays something like bishop b3, then you just can take this bishop and then you start kicking away the knight by playing h6 and after knight f3 you go forward with e4, the knight has to retreat very much backward to its original square and now even though black is a pawn down but you have a very active position, you can move the king to f7 to a more natural square and you have quick development ready, you can go with bishop to g4 and you quickly bring the pieces into play and you still have the very good and very active position. We have already analyzed five typical traps and we have two more. Let's have a look. This one you can use with black against Rila Pass, which is one of the most common chess openings of all. Here you play a6, bishop a4, it's still the main line. And now instead of knight f6, which is the most typical move, you can go pawn to d6. Stainitz used to play that way, the first world champion. And let's have a look what can happen here. The most aggressively looking move for white is the move pawn to d4. Because you see that there is a pin on your knight here and white is trying to execute this pin. For instance, with his previous move pawn to d4, he's now threatening to play d5 and just winning your knight on the pin. However, you have prepared something. Here you go b5 to push the bishop away and after bishop goes back to b3 you just grab the pawn with the knight. So far everything looks very good for white but now if white captures the pawn with the queen then he's losing the game. On a side note if white does not fall into the trap and does not capture the pawn but is doing something else then you also just continue your development normally you play knight to f6, bishop e7, costly and very standard moves, not, nothing fancy and again, it's just a normal game of chess. But what if white captures that pawn and plays queen takes d4? That enables you to play c5 and here is the trick you're gonna execute. Right now you're attacking white's queen and when the queen goes away you're willing to play pawn to c4 and the white's bishop on b3 is trapped. That's your idea and that's how you're gonna win the piece, that bishop on b3. If white tries to escape by playing queen d5, which seems to be an aggressive move because it attacks your rook on a8 and your pawn to on f7, but there is a way for you to simultaneously protect those two weaknesses by playing bishop to e6. The queen is attacked. If white tries to play queen c6 check, then you cover it with the bishop. And if white goes back queen d5, this time you do not repeat the moves by playing bishop to e6 once again. It would be just a repetition. But now you can see an important difference. By making those maneuver with your bishop, you protected your rook with the queen. And therefore now it's not a problem for you and you can go on and execute your main threat. You can push the pawn to c4 and the bishop is trapped. That's how you win the bishop and with this serious material advantage hopefully you'll win the game really easily. Here comes the last trap of this lesson. It starts with white, you, you go with e4 and then it happens if black chooses to play Sicilian defense and particularly the Sveshnikov variation which is very popular these days. Lots of strong players play it and of course lots of amateur players repeat this strategy with black. And here goes the main starting position of Sveshnikov defense. Usually on the next moves black are playing a6 to kick off your knight and then continues with pawn to b5 to expand there and continue chasing away your knight. And the main move for white is just to develop the bishop to g5 which is certainly a good option. However, in addition to that you can do something else. You can go with your knight to d5. 
you have created a very straightforward thread of making Fog with your knight, going knight to c7, which would double attack opponent's king and the rook. By the way, I've noticed that in Blitz games sometimes this threat actually does happen, because oftentimes your opponent who plays the Sveshnik of Defense, you know, at this point he was going to play pawn to a6, and oftentimes he pre-moves it or he's just really pushes that pawn to a6 on the next move quickly without evaluating your move really. And that's how he can fall into this very straightforward threat of yours. But even if your opponent does a better move and grabs the knight, then you capture with a pawn, and that goes knight e7, the most natural move. You continue with pawn to c4, and here all of a sudden the most natural move for black, the most natural looking move, which is pawn to a6, is losing. There is a move queen to a4, which pins the pawn on a6, and therefore black cannot really take your knight. So he can, but it will lose the exchange. So you grab the rook, and you won the exchange, and with the material advantage, everything's great for you. Let's see if there's anything else that he can do. But in addition to that, in addition to pinning the pawn, the queen is also making a very powerful threats along this diagonal. On the next move, you're gonna move your knight somewhere, potentially to c7, or maybe to d6. Making this discover check of opponent's king with your knight and destroying your, your opponent's position entirely. As surprisingly as it is, there is already no good defense for black. If he tries to cover this diagonal by playing bishop d7, then it's just knight d6. Smothered mate once again. We have seen this in some previous traps that we have analyzed. If black tries to cover the diagonal by playing queen to d7, then it still doesn't help. You can just continue with knight to c7 or knight takes d6, and as you can see the queen cannot capture the knight anyway because it is pinned. Therefore black has to react to check to go like king to d8, but then you can simply grab the pawn on f7 with the double attack of opponents king and the rook, and on the next move, for instance, in the line like this, you just grab the rook and you have this very huge material advantage, so you'll win the game easily. Congratulations, you have just learned 7 best chess opening traps. Try it out in your games, those traps are both effective, easy to learn, and in addition to that, they are also solid, which is a rare quality for a trap. So even if it doesn't work, your position is still fine. Try it out in your games and let me know in comments about your results. Thank you.